Good morning, folks. Well, we're starting a new series today uh, in light of the book. <laughs> the Bible, uh, but the book, of course, is the King James Holy Bible. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of the things that are going on uh, in society and in uh, politics and uh, entertainment, whatever, whatever comes up. So this will be a kind of an overview or an introduction. And so let's, let's have a look at the scriptures. It says in Proverbs chapter 29, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Uh, big news in all over the world now, and much to the chagrin of the liberal media, especially the liberal media, they uh, are scared to death about Elon Musk buying Twitter. And even worse for them, <laughs> Elon Musk wants freedom of speech. He wants a platform, or he says he does, wants a platform where there's freedom of speech, where people get to say what they want to say or what they need to say. Here's a good, uh, uh, I don't know if it's an axiom or, a good saying, there's three things that people want. They want to be, uh, they want to be heard. They want to be listened to and they want to be understood. So these are three basic things that people, that people want. That's why they want to be, have freedom of speech. Now the media would have you believe that, you know, there's going to be a monopoly on, the, on the media and, uh, uh, the the far right, <laughs> whoever they are, are going to monopolize the media and then hurt everybody or something like that. Well, uh, here's the problem. Here's here's the real motivating factor with that. It's money. <laughs> The media is losing money. CNN, nobody watches it anymore. Uh, everybody's wise to CBC getting paid off by uh, the, the liberal government of Canada. And uh, nobody's watching all that stuff anymore. What they do is they go and they, and they have a computer. And they go and they compare all the different versions of the story. And they get what's really going on. And the powers that be cannot stand that so here it is when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice when the wicked rule the people mourn it's very simple everybody kind of wants somebody who's fair and will govern righteously and i think that for all his quirkiness and for all maybe some of the other projects that are a little bit unsavory that he does, if he can provide some kind of platform where people can speak their mind, uh, that'll be a work for humanity, where people can communicate and talk to each other and compare ideas and fight and get along and agree and not agree and hammer it out. Then they're allowed to say what they like within the realm of... Uh, I was going to say good taste, but even if it's in bad taste, say, well, what if they curse and swear? And well, what if they do? Then you can just scroll on by and don't even pay any attention to it. Uh, kitty porn. That's where the, that's where you draw the line. Uh, inciting hatred towards one particular group uh, and violence toward them. That's where you draw the line. But how about if I want to say I don't like a particular political leader because of what he's done? Can I say that? Or do I have to be censored? There's something to think about. Now, here's the, here's the big deal for a Christian uh, and freedom of speech. If, they're gonna, if they'll stop us from saying 
certain medical procedures are not especially viable or as viable as the elites say it is, uh, it's not too much of a leap now uh, for them to say, okay, from now on, nobody can quote from the Bible publicly because that is soul winning. That is uh, proselytization. That's the problem. And so then you're not allowed, you, you're not allowed your re religious freedom and you're not allowed your freedom of speech. And they've already in Canada curtailed our freedom of movement. We are free, we are prisoners in our own country. And that's something. Well, there we go. So that's in light of the scripture. Now, how does a Christian behave in a certain situation like that? Well, we'll go to Acts chapter 4 and we'll have a look and we'll see the mandate for a Christian. There's a mandate for you. Well, God has given us a mandate. And I'm going to try to find it real quick here. In Acts chapter 4, they are, the powers that be in the temple are very angry with uh, Peter and, and John. And they make this statement. They make this statement. They say uh, in verse chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given, given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Okay, am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed to say that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? I am for the moment, <laughs> you see, and they weren't allowed to say that back then, but they said it anyway. And they scourged them in the temple. And I'm just looking for where, uh, you know something, what's, you know what's going to happen? Uh, I'm going to find it and it'll be at the end, of the, it'll, the video will be over. <laughs> But that's it. And they said, did we straightway not tell you not to preach in this, in this name? And they said, Peter and John, he said, we ought to obey God rather than men. You'll find it in Acts chapter 4. And uh, I should have marked it. I'll put it, in the, I'll put it in the notes. We ought to obey God rather than men. All right. Well, that's good for today. Are you saved? I'm still allowed. <laughs> I'm still allowed to ask you that question. Are you saved? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.